What is up, fight fans? In today's video, Sean O'Malley has published a video where he showed his cutting plan of how he is going to knock out Marab Dewalish Wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> a mega fight between Drakus Duplessis and Israel Adesanya is brewing, questioning who is truly the king of Africa. Also discussed in this video, the MMA community explains why a bout with Robert Whitaker could turn into a disaster for Hamza Chimaev. On paper, facing Whitaker appears challenging, marking Chimaev's first significant test in the middleweight division. The scenario carries inherent risk, but it also offers some significant rewards for Chimaev. The real thing in this one is, look at what it says. Main, Main event. Event. Done. Meaning? Five rounds. Done. Okay. I, I, I think his I think his O's gone. Okay. It could be. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, it seems that supporters will at last witness the eagerly anticipated middleweight championship showdown between Drakus Duplessis and Israel Adesanya, as the current title holder recently suggested the location and timing of the fight. Now, if you remember, recently Duplessis said that he was offered a fight against Adesanya at UFC 300, but turned it down. However, the fight did not materialize because Duplessis was unable to make a quick turnaround because of injury. So now that Duplessis is the reigning middleweight champion, he has made it clear that he would like to fight Adesanya for his first title defense, and even hinted that they would be fighting in Australia. Looks like someone wants another beating in Aus. I'm in. I also wouldn't want to fight the King of Africa on home soil. Manifestations working good for you again, Duplessis posted on social media. Ariel Helwani took to his ex account to respond to a tweet regarding the middleweight title bout and refuted the rumor of it being scheduled for UFC 305. He said, I'm told Israel Adesanya has not officially been offered this yet, but if he does, he's 100% in. And for what it's worth, I'm told DDP hasn't officially been offered yet either but this is what both camps would like to happen. While speaking to Cameron Simon, Duplessis said that as the champion, he decides when he's ready to fight, not Adesanya. He stated this. With the, the conversations of 300, that would have been a massive fight, me and Izzy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was on the table, 100%. Yeah. But one thing people don't realize is, why would I go and start a camp once again injured yeah. if I am the champion? Taking risks is one thing. I have been taking risks a lot. Yeah. But why would I risk? I'm the champion now. Mm. And I can fight when I'm ready. Yeah. I think Izzy misjudges himself as still being a champion and he's not. Now, of course, the fans, well, they did not ignore this information. And Rich Homie Coney said, This fight not taking place in Africa is ridiculous. These are two of the biggest stars in the UFC. Both of them are African, and they have beef, which will help sell the fight. What the hell is the UFC thinking? Another fan wrote, should be in Africa. It makes so much sense. Another wrote, I still don't understand how Izzy would get a title shot coming off of a loss. Make it make sense. Well, if you remember, while Izzy was the champion, he did not hide the fact that he would like to defend the championship belt against Duplessis who offended him with the statement that he would become the first real UFC champion from Africa since he still lives in South Africa, while Nigerian natives Israel Adesanya and Kamaru Usman left the continent as children. Therefore, Duplessis considers himself to be the true first UFC champion from Africa. But what do you all think about this? Would you like to see this fight? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. Sugar Sean O'Malley is gearing up for his highly anticipated return to the Octagon this September. As you remember, after his victorious defense of the World Bantamweight title against Marlon Cheeto Vera at UFC 299, O'Malley expressed interest in a champion versus champion super fight with Ilya Topuria. However, fans were more vocal about their desire for him to tackle the formidable Marab Dewalish Wheelie in his own weight class. 
So, acknowledging the fan sentiments, O'Malley recently confirmed that DeWallish Wheelie would indeed be his next opponent. The announcement came in the form of a single word from O'Malley, September. With this hint dropped by O'Malley, speculation is rife that the epic showdown between him and DeWallish Wheelie will likely take place on September 14th at UFC 306, coinciding with the promotion's debut at the Sphere in Las Vegas. Fueling further excitement, O'Malley has even shared footage outlining his strategy for defeating DeWallish Wheelie. As you can see in the video, O'Malley looks like he's going to run from him and then hope to catch him like he caught Marab's friend, Aljamain Sterling. But I think Marab's probably been studying a lot of O'Malley tape, and well, he probably won't make that same mistake. Of course, Sean is going to give Marab some problems though with his striking and footwork, but Marab has shown that he can be very patient which personally I think could be the key to beating O'Malley. Sean only knocks out those fighters who come at him head on. Therefore, Marab just needs to wait, and then Marab will have the opportunity to take him down. And then, well, the champion probably won't have much of a chance. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but hey, what do you guys think? How do you think the fight will go? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. On June 22nd, the UFC will hold its first event in the history of the promotion in Saudi Arabia. The event will be headlined by a fight between former middleweight champion Robert Whittaker and the undefeated Hamzat Chimaev. Now, on paper, the fight with Whittaker looks difficult. And in fact, this is Chimaev's first real test of the middleweight division. The scenario carries a lot of inherent risk, but it also offers some substantial rewards. Currently, Whitaker is ranked third in the middleweight rankings, while Hamzat is positioned at 11th. So a win for Boers would propel him into the elite circle of the organization's top middleweights. A significant point of speculation is Hamzat's ability to endure a five-round fight if it does come down to that. His previous bout against Kamaru Usman raised some doubts about his stamina. If he fails to secure a win against Whitaker in the early rounds, can Hamzat manage his energy effectively? I mean, this could be Chimaev's first ever five round fight, and there is no doubt that his opponent knows how to go the distance, but nevertheless, Hamzat will deservedly still be the favorite in this fight. Now, Michael Bisping doubts Chimaev's fight with Whitaker, saying this is his first 25 minute fight. If it does not end early, it will be a disaster for Hamzat, Bisping stated on his YouTube channel. And as I say again, I am not criticizing. It's just a real conundrum, right? Do I believe, brother, that I can go out there and smash this guy? Yes, he could, probably, maybe. But what if he can't? What if he empties the tank? What if he gives everything he's got to get that finish and Robert Whittaker is still standing? He could be okay? Right? There's going to be a lot of pressure on his shoulders fighting in Saudi Arabia. I believe that Kamzat can definitely get Robert to the ground. Yeah. Okay. Especially in the first round but he better do some damage to Robert in that first round with all the uh, effort it's gonna take for him to get him to the ground and everything and keep him there. He's gonna have to be in great shape and know that Whitaker's gonna come out just as strong in the second and third and fourth mm -hmm. and fifth. And you've gotta get through all of that. So, you know, five rounds makes a difference in the, in the fight world. Well, let's look at the Chemayev card. If Chemayev comes out on top, his last fight was for number one contendership. He won, but he broke his hand. So he missed the alleged offered date, which was in Canada. He ended up being Strickland Duplessis to refresh your memory. And he's back in this spot, but does he have a travel ban? I spoke with Daniel Cormier about that. I said, Daniel, I can't get this damn thing confirmed. I've heard you speak about the rumored travel ban. Have you got it confirmed? Daniel said the same thing. No, I can't get it confirmed. He said, but I don't share your opinion, Jail. So now that now that we're in Saudi Arabia and we're already been in Abu Dhabi, just for example, there's enough opportunities for a champion who only fights two to three times a year to fight two to three times a year. He didn't agree. He didn't agree that if the travel ban's in place, that that would forego an opportunity for Jemayev to fight for the belt. Like when, when you're on top of the world, when you win, you're on top of the world, you're everybody's friend. You're in the limelight. Everyone loves you. Like you yeah. can do no wrong. When you go home, you can do no wrong. You're just, everything is better. But then when you lose, mate, mate, nobody, nobody wants, nobody knows <laughs> He's you. He's a mate. Nobody knows mate. you. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> you get it. Like nobody knows you. Nobody wants to talk to you. When you go home, everything sucks. Like it's yeah. hard. It's really like it is crazy. The the differences. That's all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it is very important to us. And thank you all in advance.